Hi guys, my name's Terry, I'm a tradie and I'm also a climate campaigner and I've been trying to get your attention for the last five and a half years but you haven't been paying attention. <coughs> so today I'm going to talk to you about concentrated solar thermal power with molten salt storage. This technology can make power 24 hours a day. So up on the wall here behind me is a photograph of a concentrated solar thermal power station that's up and running in Spain. It makes power 24 hours a day. That's base load power and, and is making power for 22,000 houses today. So how does this technology work? Well, this here is a model built by my friends at the Granville's Men's Shed in Sydney. And the, the model explains the basic parts to how concentrated solar thermal works. What happens is as the sunlight comes down here, it hits a large field of mirrors where the mirrors reflect the sunlight into the top of the receiver. In the top of the receiver there's a molten salt which is not sodium chloride, it's potassium sodium nitrate. You then pump that hot liquid salt down out of the tower and you store the heat energy in the tank. When the sun goes down, you use the stored energy out of the tank to run the turbine at night time. Now there's enough stored energy in the tank to run the turbine at full power for 15 hours in total darkness. In other words, it makes power 24 hours a day just from sunlight. So what's potassium sodium nitrate? Well, if I was holding a lump of it here right now, it would look like a lump of snow. If I then stuck it in a pot and heated that pot up to 220 degrees Celsius, it would then melt into a liquid. Pretty much the same way that ice melts into water when you um, add heat to it. Now that salt will remain thermally stable to 600 degrees Celsius. So in the tower here we only heat it to 570. So there are four main parts to the salt cycle. So on this plant you've got two closed loop systems. One's the closed loop salt cycle and the other one is the closed loop water cycle. So on the closed loop salt cycle we heat the salt to 570 degrees Celsius here. We then pump that hot liquid salt down out of the tower and we store the energy in the tank. Then we run the hot salt through a heat exchanger so it gives up its heat to the water and then uh, back into the cold tank at 290 degrees Celsius and then back up to the receiver here to get to the uh, 570 degrees Celsius again. So there's four main parts to the salt cycle. The receiver, the hot tank, the heat exchanger and the cold tank. And that works like this. So it's just a closed loop system. It goes around and around and around through the heat exchanger to, to, the, to the water which turns it into steam. So that's the other, um, the other cycle here, is the steam cycle. So it comes out of the condenser as water, it goes into the heat exchanger, the hot salt flashes it off into superheated steam, which then goes to the turbine and drives the turbine, which generates the power going out to the grid. So that's a closed loop system as well. So the water just continually goes round and round and round through here, through this air-cooled condenser. Now, for our plant in Australia, all our condensers are water-cooled. We use no cooling towers, which is going to be a huge saving on Australia's natural fresh water resource. So um, what happens if you get those uh, bad weather, cloudy days, cyclone yazis and so forth? Well, what you do is, is you have a biomass backup heater. Now, that biomass backup heater... There is, uh, you store biomass on site, which is pelletised wheat stubble. You then, um, uh, when you get your bad weather events, you then uh, burn your uh, biomass in your biomass backup heater, which keeps the salt hot, which keeps the turbine turning. And so that looks like that. So through the hot tank, through the heat exchanger, back to the cold tank, back through your biomass heater, and then back into the hot tank again. So you only need enough biomass uh, on site to run, run it for X amount of time, which might be hours or even days. Um, in the plan, they've estimated that less than 2% of the time per year would be needed to run. 
and uh, that keeps your power generating. So the great thing about being able to store energy in the salt in this big tank beside the tower here is, is that it means that the plant can be used in two ways. It can either be used as baseload power or dispatchable power. So there's all sorts of uh, different things, different applications you can use these plants for. Uh, so how you use them depends on how much storage you have. If you're going to use them as baseload power, then you need to have enough power to cover the night time, say 15 hours to make sure. If you're going to use them as dispatchable power, you might only need four hours of storage. It just depends on how you want to use them. The mirrors uh, follow the sun around the sky and they uh, make sure that the light is reflected up into the tower. They move forward and back and sideways and uh, all these mirrors keep the sun focused or, con or the sunlight concentrated on the top of the tower to keep the salt at 570 degrees Celsius. So it can maintain that temperature during all day so it can build up its salt reserves in the big tank here. So is there a plan of where, how to use this? Well there is. The plan's called Beyond Zero Emissions Stationary Energy Plan. It was developed in partnership with the Energy, with the University of Melbourne's Energy Research Institute. And this plan tells us how that we can be 100% renewable energy in just 10 years. It's fully costed and fully engineered. And if we go over here and have a look on this photograph here, you'll see that there's a map of Australia and there's 12 solar regions and 23 wind regions as, as well as a grid upgrade. Now as you can see, Port Augusta there is already on the map slated as a solar region, but you can also see the grid upgrade runs through Port Augusta and so that's going to make an important regional energy hub. So that's the other plan. We've got another plan here for repower Port Augusta. And this is a plan to replace Port Augusta's existing 700 megawatts of brown coal power. So that brown coal power has come to the end of its useful life. They're running out of easily extractable brown coal at Lee Creek. Um, the brown coal power generation in Port Augusta causes huge health effects in Port Augusta. High rates of cancer, respiratory illness, etc. And um, so there's a plan here to replace it with 700 megawatts of this technology here. So what uh, you guys need to know is, is you guys need to know that you can do something about this, that you can make a difference by contacting your local member of parliament and telling them that this is what you want built, this is what you want for your future power generation. And it's important that you do that because democracy only works if you exercise it. Good luck, fellas.